we had Urban Fight Tips, man, and um, I'm not sure if everybody's aware of the other senseless act of violence that took place, the execution that took place uh, in Florida on Thursday. But um, it's, it's, it's starting to be uh, something that's continual. Um, we're starting to witness and watch our young black men being executed, um, and nobody's doing anything about it. Um, there are a couple things that took place in this video that bothered me that this is the reason why we have to train, okay? Um, in the video, we noticed that the individual was in the car with his wife or his girlfriend and their son. Um, Coach Drow here, he's gonna, he's gonna play the white man uh, for right now, okay? <laughs> only, he, for now. Only, only for now, only for now. right now, <laughs> only for right now. All right, so what happens is he comes back to the back of the car, he starts to Notice that he's, he's looking for, looking to see if she has some kind of handicap sticker or something on her car because she's parked in a handicap spot. There's no sticker. So then he proceeds to where she is in the car, okay? So now he's harassing this young lady and he's continuously doing so. So now here's the first problem. We already, we, we already realized that this person is a threat, okay? You have a large white man who's hovering over a black woman trapped in a car. That's a problem. So she does the right thing. She's in the car and she proceeds to get out. Why does she get out? Because she can't drive off anywhere, okay? She, does, she can't leave her husband, she can't leave her child. So she decides to get out and meet the threat, okay? Now, here's what her problem was. She's not on, okay? Um, I'm not sure if she has any training. I can't, I can't speak on it or not. But she doesn't get out and she doesn't move him back. If she's gonna get out of the car and he's at, he's at the distance that he is, back up a little bit, she gets out of the car. Her initial movement should have been to push him back, back the fuck up, move back, step away. Using this long guard to keep her opponent back, okay? Even though she's dealing with a man, she's using this long guard to keep him away. This would have been step number one. Also, if she was armed, she gets out of the car, she gets out of the car, she has her fire on her side arm down to her side. So now if she has her side arm down to her side, she can actually expose it. Because if we're talking about stand your ground, it has to work both ways, right? Because the law is fair in America. The law is never used to go against black people. So she was in the right. If she gets out of the car and she already has her side arm drawn, right? So now he sees that she's that she's armed with a weapon. He now can either move back, if he reaches for his, she draws down, boom. Because what? He approached her as the aggressor, okay? She's a woman, she's in fear of her life. This is stand your ground, correct? All right, so this is dealing with her. The man, when he, pull, when he comes out of the store, first thing he sees is this guy hovering over his woman. So what does he do? He walks up and he pushes when he pushes him, he goes to the ground. Here's where the mistake happens. When he pushes him and he goes to the ground, he turns. When he turns, he gives him ample time because he doesn't close the distance. He gives him time to pull his side on. When he pulls his side on, boom, he fires twice. Point blank in the chest, now you got a dead black man. This is what should have taken place. We're going to go through a couple scenarios real quick. Husband comes out, boyfriend comes out, sees the confrontation. If he pushes him here, boom, he now closes the distance. Soccer kick here, he can close the distance again. When he pushes him down, soccer kick here, right? He can close the distance another way. Come down, ground the pound, right? Working his strikes on the ground, boom. Now he has it down. Now he's able to do what? Search his opponent, see that he's armed, okay? Cool. I got his weapon. And now it's time to get my family out of here, okay? Also, man, yeah, that's a, that's a hell of a gun. All right, so um, another way of looking at it also is if you're not gonna use the strikes, if you're not gonna, uh, if, if you wanna use the strikes, you wanna come out striking, okay? You don't wanna sit there and push and give him an opportunity because when you push, when he pushes, he goes down, right? You actually created the, the distance. You created that distance that you that that, hit, that your opponent needed to be able to pull his side arm and to fight. Okay. Now, 
We always teach closing that gap, closing that distance, staying on your opponent till he stops moving. When your opponent's no longer a threat, that's when you can calm down and that's when you can say, okay, I'm safe now. So, when he comes in with the push, again, here, there is no distance closing. So you're giving him an ample time to pull his firearm and you don't have enough time to react. Now, if that push would have taken place, his girlfriend was already on the outside of the car. If he did that push and if they were well trained, what would have happened is, as soon as he would have done that, she would have come, gun, boom. She would have called him. She would have said hot, she would have said firearm. So he would have never gotten an opportunity to pull that gun because he would have been reaching for it. She would have noticed it because of the angle he was at. She would have came over, boom. If she was armed, she would have shot, boom. So. Working as a tandem, we have to make sure that our men and women are trained together, all right? Here's another way of dealing with it. He's standing here, the husband's cut, the boyfriend husband's coming back, and this is what he sees. He sees this going on, so now he comes in, boom! He hits him with an overhand right. That's the knockout shot. So now he gets him down to the ground, boom, 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 we finish up, elbows down. Now we start searching because we're thorough. Boom, you take the side arm. Make sure that he has nothing on him. Boom. Everybody gets in the car, everybody goes home, everybody's safe, okay? Or you wait till the police come, and then we always believe this, I'd rather be what? Judged by 12 and carried by six, okay? So, screw that. We wanna make sure that we're surviving and we're able to live to the next day, okay? Because now you got a young man who's gonna grow up without his father. He has to witness his father being murdered by some punk ass white man who's obviously gonna get off, okay? So, this is a couple variations or ways of us dealing with this potential threat, okay? So, I want y'all to look at it, understand it. It's not about complexity. This is not one of our complex videos. Where we're working a whole bunch of strikes and a whole bunch of techniques. It's not that complicated. It's just about being coordinated in our movement and thorough in our movement, okay? This is not about complicated strikes. It's not about a whole bunch of extraordinary things. If he's standing here from this position, if you don't want to if you don't want to throw the straight right hand or the overhand right, and you want to come in and even I would rather you secure him to move him back. I would rather you do that to, as opposed to pushing him and keeping him away or, or giving him that distance in order to pull his side on. Now. I wouldn't advise grabbing, I wouldn't advise getting into a tussle situation, but I would rather you do that than to give this man distance and space for opportunity, okay? So, this is why we have to understand the law, we have to be armed, we have to be trained. Um, landing the shot, that first shot would have been a knockout shot. If he's back here again, closing that range, closing that distance, you're coming in. You're coming full momentum and you hit, boom, that's a knockout shot. If you don't want to use the hands, you can come off with the elbow, same thing. If he's here, boom, you come up, boom, elbow over the top, elbow here. We're doing the same thing. We're, 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 we're unleashing damage and unleashing certain, certain amounts of pain so that way we can knock our opponent out. Our opponent's no longer moving. He's no longer a threat. Now you can get your family to safety. Okay, I hope everybody understands it. This is not a complicated video. This is just about being tactical and being efficient with what we do. Finish the job. There should be no fight that you're in that your opponent is breathing or, he, or he's moving and able to respond and he's still a threat. No, we don't stop till our opponent is no longer a threat, which means they stop moving, they're asleep. And then we'll handle the rest of it later, okay? Get home safely, guys. Protect your families, protect your wives, protect your children. Women, you need to train so that way you can help defend your men. And she needed to have his back also, but it's not her fault because she wasn't trained. This is why we have to train. And a lot of times when we get into these situations where fear overtakes us, you can be in the gym all day hitting the bag and you doing your movements and you're looking good and you got good form and all this other shit. But we're not training under pressure. Just like you go to the gun range, you shoot at the gun range, you're not training under pressure. These people are training under pressure and you're dealing with individuals that don't value your life. So when you're dealing with that kind of situation, guys, you've got to be prepared to meet the level of violence and supersede their level of violence. I hope this, I hope this video finds you all in peace and love and I hope that uh, Yisrael and the black nation will start to train and start to defend themselves in a better manner. Be blessed. Peace.